I'm really pleased that we're joined on uh, Not the Andrew Marr Show by Rika Bird, who has, uh, as people may have noticed in the past week, been the centre of a media storm. Um, I wanted to find out uh, uh, what, how Rika has reacted to it. But before I do that, I'd like to remind people about how Rika has been misrepresented. Uh, I'm going to play you two clips. One is from Panorama and one is a audio clip of Rika that was taken from the, on the Canary. Ben Westerman was dispatched to investigate. He was the only Jewish member of the disputes team. In one interview, he was confronted with the very anti-Semitism he'd been investigating. The person got up to leave the room and then turned back to me and said, where are you from? And I said, what do you mean, where am I from? And she said, I asked you, where are you from? And I said, I'm not prepared to discuss this. And they said, are you from Israel? What can you say to that? You are assumed to be in cahoots with, with the Israeli government. It's this obsession with the fact that, that just spills over all, all the time into anti-Semitism. I'm just um, curious because I haven't been in the Labour Party very long and I've certainly never been to anything like this informal interview before. Um, and it, so I'm just curious about... Um, like, what branch are you in? I don't think that's relevant. Oh, OK. I, I hope that's OK. I'm sorry, I, just, I don't think where I'm from is, is at all relevant to, to the investigation. Yeah, I just, I just misunderstood. I thought the investigation bit about me not being a silent witness was... No, no, it is. It is. You're, you're more than welcome to ask questions, but I, I, I preserve the right to, to not answer them, and I, mm. I feel that's a, that's a question about my personal situation, which I don't think is relevant to the situation in Fall Riverside. Oh, no, it might not be. It's just, but it might be interesting. I, I'm not prepared mm. to, to discuss my, my dress, basically. Um, mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, if you have anything else to add or any questions that, that you, you have regarding anything, please feel free to email me. Um, I'll make a note of what you said about the SAR and I'll pass it on to the data about protection, the... the subject access request. Yeah. SAR. Yeah. And I'll pass it on. Um, I'll just say that, I'll, you know, make sure it, it was done thoroughly. Um, yeah, as I say, I, as I said at the beginning, I will, I will um, draw up my conclusions and, and pass them on to the NEC disputes panel in January, um, after which we hope to get an AGM sorted as quickly as possible. Um, because obviously we're outside of the year now, so we need to we need to get that done quickly. Yeah. Um, and move forward. Great. So thank That's you. Okay. Now, uh, Rika, thank you for um, coming on to the show. H how are you doing? Oh, all right. It's just <clears throat> each time I, I can see that clip quite, quite a few times. And uh, I notice each time I see the clip, I, I feel really annoyed because um, that just wasn't what happened. Um, the, clip, the, the panorama clip. Um, and um, at the time, during the interview, um, I just thought, oh well, you know, I was I was just making conversation. Um, my role in that interview was as a silent witness for my friend who was under investigation, uh, together with four or five other people from uh, the Riverside constituency. This was way back in December 2016, I think. Um, and so at the time, um, you know, because I was a silent witness, I had to, I, I was silent. But that's why I made sure at the end of the interview that I was I was um, freed from having to be silent, and then I was you know given the opportunity if I wanted to make any comments. And I mm. thought Helen, my friend, had made a really good account of herself anyway, um, and I didn't need to add anything further because she she'd done that in in her usual very able way. Um, so I was just making conversation, you know, with him. And at the time when he didn't want to join in the conversation, I just thought, oh, well, OK, he doesn't he doesn't want to, you know, and left it like that. At, you know, that the morning after we'd seen the programme, and we'd watched the Panorama broadcast. Right. And Colin and I were just, you know, talking about it with each other on the phone. And um, can I just ask you, how did you why did you think that that what he was saying was relating to what your conversation had been because could you have thought oh that might have been someone else or did because there must have been something that you thought that sounds um, similar to my 
conversation, but it was so different. I mean, to say, are you from Israel or what aren't you from is a totally different well, thing. To, to begin with, um, to begin with, it, it wasn't quite clear who he was talking about. But within uh, about 10 days or so, um, it, af after the broadcast, it was clear um, that it was myself and Helen that he was, that he was referring to. Um, I don't know who made the inquiries or how they discovered it, but it was, it was clearly established um, that, it, that it was myself um, that yeah. he was referring to. Um, well, I mean, that, that, that's kind of been um, shown up by, you see, in, in a way, it wasn't clear that the BBC was acknowledging it was your interview that was misinterpreted uh, or misused in some way by by in that in, in that interview on Panorama, but because of some of the to and fro in the Guardian, the BBC the, the BBC have actually kind of acknowledged it because what I'll just I'll just go through this quickly. Um, if you see if you see this is a an article from George Monbiot in The Guardian, he says, perhaps the most decisive blow to Corbyn's leadership as a BBC panorama is Labour anti-Semitic. It interviewed a former Labour official who it claimed was confronted in a disciplinary hearing by the very anti-Semitism he'd been investigating. He alleged that the woman he was questioning asked him, where are you from? Are you from Israel? The two women in the meeting, both of whom were Jewish, had recorded the conversation with his permission. Backed by their recording, whose veracity no one seems to have disputed, they say it shows that she said something entirely different. What branch are you in? Meaning what branch of the party? And that when he told her he didn't think that was relevant, she sim said simply, oh, OK. So George Monbiot's uh, reporting of what of, of the missing, misuse of your interview by Panorama was then responded to by John Ware and Neil Grant, who's the producer of that Panorama programme. Um, and this is what they say about George Monbiot's article. He refers to a tape recording which he suggests shows that the account given to Panorama by a Labour Party official investigating allegations of anti-Semitism in Liverpool was wrong in recalling that he'd been asked by a Jewish woman if he was from Israel. In fact, the tape to which Monbiot refers is not def definitive of the entirety of the conversation since it stops abruptly just at the point when the official says he was asked if he was from Israel, having been twice pressed by the woman to say which Labour branch he was from. She did not, as Monbiot writes, simply say, oh, OK, and leave it at that when he declined to answer a question by saying it wasn't relevant. She persisted. Oh, no, it might not be. Just thought it might be interesting. So the conversation seemed to be heading in the direction recalled by the official before the tape cuts out. Now, uh, Rika, on that point, this is this is John Ware and, and Neil Grant who produced the Panorama documentary. It says here, having been pre twice pressed by the woman to say which Labour branch he was from. Um, so he's acknowledging that, that you asked that question. Um, so he's identifying that it was you that mm. that was all about. John so Ware... It's over a John Ware, I mean, John Ware is saying effectively that you're you're being dishonest, uh, that you had said something in that in that he's identified it was you that was in that interview because he's acknowledged that that was that you had asked what branch are you from. He said it was you, and then he's saying that you continued, and then you said he's a, he's implying that you then said what was in the panorama. So. Uh, you know, John Ware. That, that, who, that's, that's not true. <laughs> it's just simply not true. But then, but then, this is this is the crux of it. As I, I think this is the crux of it because um, if we look at this, this is the end of John Ware's um, uh, letter to the to the Guardian, which he wrote with the producer. He says the entire program has been successfully defended in three separate defamation cases and are judged by the broadcasting regulator Ofcom to have complied with the broadcasting code on both accuracy and impartiality. What I think he's doing there is saying, come on then, um, I've got the, I've taken these people on legally. Um, we've got Ofcom behind us. Um, you, you can either 
just swallow it and accept the fact that you um, said this thing and, and not make any fuss about it, or I'm going to take you to the cleaners. So, because I, I'm satisfied that, that what I'm satisfied about the truth of what I said. So, in that sense, um, it's like I, I almost, I've got the feeling, well, he can say what he likes. I know what the truth is, you know, and it's there on the tape. And, you know, either he likes it or he doesn't like it. And that's just tough because as far as I'm concerned, that that is, that is how it happened, but, you know, as recorded on, on our tape. And we haven't oh, yeah. got to the tape. The tape was, uh, you know, there with their agreement. I mean... Helen wasn't the only person. She was one of a group of five or six people from that constituency. And the members who were called to be interviewed as part of that investigation checked and made sure with the regional office at the time, could they uh, take a recorder in, into the interviews? And the regional office were quite happy about it. Therefore, we, we had a tape recorder with us when we were in the interview because it had already been previously agreed that we could do. I mean, isn't it a bit weird that they, they allowed you to take a tape recorder in, mm -hmm. so they must have known that you'd recorded it, and yet he comes out with this, this bizarre, bizarre uh, uh, idea that you said this thing that wasn't said. I mean, so they... What, what well, do you what, think... They, in, why do you think they think they could say something that didn't happen and you'd recorded it? It just seems bizarre. It, it's it's the maker of the program. I mean, I don't know what the relationship is or was, and I'm not particularly interested between the program maker and the BBC, you know, Panorama team or what have you. Um, uh, I mean, he. It, it it was known anyway. It was known that there was a tape recording available. Um, and why he why they didn't why they ignored the existence of it? I really don't know. Yeah, weird. But I I just want to say that you know the next the next part of this story is that you you don't you didn't um, take it because you've written a, a letter to the to the Guardian with Helen Marks uh, in which you've written the program makers continue to defend the sequence on the grounds that the Israel question may have been asked after the tape was switched off. We emphatically deny that this was the case. The tape runs for a further minute of amicable chat about procedural matters. Not only did we not ask the question, it is inconceivable that we would have done so. We are both Jewish pensioners, a fact that Panorama failed to mention. Programme makers have at no stage offered us the opportunity to refute their false allegations against us. We trust that they will now withdraw them and apologise. Uh, I'm assuming they haven't uh, contacted you to say anything since then? I haven't heard either from Panorama or from the BBC, no. Right, and uh, and, and uh, are you going to keep uh, pushing this? Because, I mean, you've obviously, you're coming on here. Uh, last night, Navarra Media featured uh, the story. I mean, are you are you sick to death of it? Or do, you, or do you want people to continue to push for the truth to come out? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the truth is already there. Um, I don't, I don't feel the need to keep saying that the truth is there because it is. Um, yeah. And if other people like yourself or or whoever want to, um, you know, c carry out discussions about it, either in this kind of media or in print or whatever, that that that's fine. Um, you know. I, I can't I can't see why um anybody's going to hold such venom towards me um simply because um all I'm talking is the truth that they would they, that they would want to make um mince me out of me. Do you know what I mean? Um I know some people ha are not well intentioned. Um and and if that's the case, um, I'll, I don't know. I'll just have to get people around me that 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 will that will defend my honour, as it were. 
I'm, I'm, you know, I'm de- I am defending my own honour anyway, because um, it because it's it it stands, you know, in in its own right kind of thing. Um, and, um, do do you have people around you who have supported you all the way through? I mean, it must have been um, difficult once once your name was put into the centre of all this. Well, now the letter's gone onto the um, Guardian online letters. I don't think it's yet in the print version of the paper, but it's certainly in the online letters section of the paper. Um, I, I, I've actually had quite a number um, of really very, very favourable and supportive messages um, through various media, you know, um, Facebook email and uh, and 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 uh, phone on you know mobile message message on my mobile so so in in that sense I suppose the answer to your question is yes I, I think there are people that are are you know prepared to stand up and say you know as far as they're concerned with regards to this I'm a, I'm an honest woman 